Hi everyone, welcome to CEO Meets. I'm Pip Wilkins and really, really delighted to be joined by Martin Jones from Home Instead today. Um, so Martin, first question always, tell us about Home Instead, what you do, how big you are, how long you've been going, all of those kind of key critical stats about the business. Great, thanks Pip. Uh, great to be here uh, to have this conversation with you. So Home Instead, uh, we've been in the UK now for 15 years, believe it or not. Um, We've got, we operate over 232 franchises across the whole of the UK um, and we provide care for older people to live well, safe, secure and most importantly, independently in their own home. Um, and you know, and our, our vision is to change the face of aging and that's been, you know, we're, we're part of a global network, we're the largest global home care provider. We're the, one of the largest home care providers here in the UK, providing over 9 million hours of care last year alone um, so you know that's what we do and 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 it works really well within franchising because quite often in social care I get asked well why is home instead won the queen's war why is home instead got 67 outstandings you know because that's far on you know a third of our network more than and you know the, the network average in social care is five percent and I say it's because it's franchising we've got people who have invested in the business that bought a business to make a difference and I, one of our USPs is our franchise network, you know, and, and that was what, you know, so that's what we do. And, and it's a you know great business to be in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and some fab stats and we've seen loads of innovations. You're a current, obviously, franchisor of the year. But for us, you know, we've seen you grow and innovate and change a lot. What have been the key things that have changed for you in the last couple of years? Well, I think I'll probably take us back to 2016. That was the first big fundamental change when we sold the business back to our founders in the US. And, um, you know, in, in, since 2016, we've doubled the size of the business, both in terms of size of franchise network and, and volume of the business. We've uh, invested heavily in terms of our infrastructure to support our network here. We've invested heavily in terms of the brand. We've gone through a rebrand just recently over the last few months, which is really exciting. I'm glad to see you've got in the top top corner there. There now, and that really gives a new feel in terms of and how we can really um, push the brand forward. And most importantly, you know, we've, we've it's not just about home instead. You know, if you've, if you've got a vision to change the face of aging, you've got to work within the sector and drive up the awareness of the sector. And some of the advertising we've, we've, we've gone on to onto the television. Uh, Alan Titchmarsh is doing some uh, uh, voiceovers recently, uh, and that's been very nice. But the big thing is raising the awareness of home care. You know, because one of the big strategic intents with home instead is to make home care the default care norm here in the UK. Uh, and that's where Home Instead have really started to invest in, and support the network. And that's quite an established brand now. So you said, you know, well over 200 uh, franchisees. Uh, a lot of those are going to be kind of coming up to a, a resale sort of stage. What kind of processes and things are you doing to support those that are either exiting um, or indeed those new ones coming on board? Well, I mean, you know, last year alone, I mean, if you think of the last 12 months, we, we sold 14 new franchises. So we did fantastically well. And we've got an onboarding journey for, for the new franchises. And we've got, uh, we've got uh, what we call the franchise journey, which takes the franchise owners right the way through from the onboarding start, uh, stage right to, right to exit. And we've got different categories and we support in a different way along that journey. And in terms of the, the, the resales, you're right. We, we've got um, quite, um, you know, just, le just less than 10% of the network now that's, that's putting themselves up for resale because as we know, in franchising, it's healthy that they get to about 10 years and they start to think, you know, is this what I want to do long term? And we really support them with that journey. So we've, we've got a, a brokerage um, uh, affiliate business now, which helps them sell the business. And we also help them with the well-being right the way through that franchise journey and exit. Because a lot of our owners, as I said before, the, the buying a business to make a difference and the passion is about changing the face of aging. They could become integral in terms of the community. And then they think, I love this business so much. What will they do when they leave? And we actually help them on that journey. We start to give them in terms of looking at different options and advice and, and how they can transition from exiting the business because exiting the business is just as important as entering the business for me. And also we're using some of those owners who've left. We've got an alumni club now and we're using some of those, those owners to come back and help and do some mentorship. Because you wouldn't want to lose that 
rich tapestry of experience of 10, 15 years, um, you know, and the, you know, so and we're going to use that continually going forward to help with new owners and existing owners because franchisees listen to franchisees and that's the beauty of franchising. So we help them all. The alumni concept. I think it's the, the alumni stuff, I think is brilliant um, because at the end of the day, you know, we haven't seen lots of franchisors focusing on, you know, franchisees once they, they, they leave the network. Um, so this is a really unique and new thing um, and definitely groundbreaking from a franchising perspective. Yeah, I think I think for me, they're, they are your brand ambassadors. And I think it's the same as when any employee leaves the business, you always want to leave on good terms. You always want to talk about the brand and say, you know, Homestead was a great place, a great franchise to, to own. You know, why wouldn't you? For me, it just it seems to make sense for both them and us. So talk to us a bit about some of the collaborations. I understand you're working with the University of York. What are you up to there? Yeah, so... This comes back to changing the face of aging for me. Um, there's a dearth of, of, of good quality data within the social care system. So we all know, and I would say this, of course, wouldn't I? But people want to stay in their own home. That's where they want to be. As you, as you, as you grow old, that's where you want to be. But actually, there's very little limited data to actually prove that out. So we've, we've sponsored... Um, a research fellow at York University. So it's cost us well over £300,000. We've invested this cash. Um, and that's to help the whole of social care to prove that actually home care is, is the default care norm for the future. I want, you know, homes are going to be the hospital wards of the future. That's where we're moving towards. It's going to be more community care. So we've really, so we're using the university to help us prove that out. They're also working on some workforce studies. We're doing a global workforce report as well. Um, in terms of what that looks like um, because within our sector you know we've been over the last 12 months we've had a lot of people join home and said which is fantastic mm -hmm. but as a country we know we're heading towards zero rate unemployment at some sort of time once we get post-covid and you know so we need to think of how we can really attract a bit, you know the uh, new people to join us in terms of become our caregivers the key players and franchisees as well um, so they're going to help us in two angles but Fundamentally, it's about proving out that home care is the best place to be. Um, and that's not just for Homestead. It's about changing the face of aging as well. So we're linking in to the Department of Health and Social Care. We're linking in to um, uh, the Queen's College. We're linking in to Oxford University. So they are really being that, that conduit. Um, and you work with a number of charities and things as well, don't you? Yes. So we work with... Uh, so. Personally, I work, I'm, a, I'm the board of Age UK. I'm the chair of Silverline, which is obviously supporting um, uh, lonely older people. And I'm a trustee of care workers uh, charity as well. And that's really, so that's what I, but also in, in conjunction with that, the brand, we work very heavily with people like Dementia UK, uh, Alzheimer's UK, and obviously Parkinson's. We've struck up a new relationship with Parkinson's UK. And that does two things. They We've worked together on a new training. Uh, so what, for our caregivers to enable people with Parkinson's to live well and safe in their own home. But it's also, we're giving them support in terms of well, what does it look like to live at home with Parkinson's? What home care should they have? What does good quality home care look like? So it's a two way street, it's not just uh, one way. So, and we've got other, other um, new partnerships uh, in the, in, in the, uh, in the channel. We, we've also got, we're looking at, um, um, different things which I will keep under my keep under my cap as it well, were. I, I know that you'll keep under your cap for a short time and I'll find out all about it when you enter the awards later in the year again. <laughs> it's my favourite time. Every CEO meets I do someone's like I can't tell you this and I'm like you will later. <laughs> I nearly did then I nearly let it slip but better not better not. It's always great and it's you know fab to see uh, the innovations which is obviously why um, you're holding that kind of current franchise or of the year title. Um, I have one final question. I ask this to everybody, and I think it's a key thing. Um, but what would be your top piece of advice? Um, and, and I'll let you have one, maybe two. Um, but top tips for someone if they're looking to invest in a franchise, key considerations, maybe. I'm going to give you three, just to be cheeky. Okay. <laughs> do your research. You, you've got to do your research. You've got to do your research. You've got to enjoy it. If you're going to enter into that sector and get in, get, uh, in a partnership, with a, you've got to enjoy what they're actually about um, and look at a franchise business that's investing in the brand like Home Instead. 
you've got to see the, the brand that's actually continuously developing, not just in technology, in other bits of innovation, and actually the brand itself. So look at a brand that's actually invested. Those would be my three key things I'd look for. Fantastic. Martin, thank you very much for your time today. It's been fab talking to you. Thank you very much.